Yes, there's that. Test the true love. I got a job for you. Welcome to tonight's VHS, where we take a look back at a 1984 movie that was a definite VHS classic entitled Blood Simple. We are doing this for two reasons. Number one, we are doing it to honor the amazing M. Emmett Walsh, who just passed away, who stars in this movie. And also, we are looking back at um, VHS Classics. And just this past year, had a real awesome conversation with my main man, um, Adam. And uh, here is that conversation. Do you mean what you said before? Are you just being a gentleman? I mean, I like you. The good thing, the cool thing about Blood Simple is, if you watch that movie, you wouldn't really expect that was someone's first film they ever made, you know? And when I say someone, I mean, obviously the both of them, uh, it's, it was very planned out. I mean, obviously this, the script was initially supposed to be kind of a eighties B horror movie in a way, but it kind of evolved because they knew they could, they could sell something like this better, um, to the few investors they had, you know, Ooh, yeah. and they did make it in uh, Texas because, I'm not sure if it was Joel or Ethan, or, or maybe both of them. They lived in Austin, where it take, you know it take, takes place. So what they could do is a lot of extras and different actors are in the movies that were the friends of theirs. There were people they knew that they could cast for free, you know. So they said, "Well, let's just film it here." And some, you know, other movies and stuff that that were uh, like I don't know if it was true crime series or things like that. They were that were based in Texas, kind of inspired it. But the script really evolved a lot before. Um, the final draft and if you look at it it's it, it follows a very the, the coen brothers formula pretty much to a t where you know if you want look at any coen brothers movie whether it's um a movie like this um whether it's you know they made mob movie a mob movie like you know miller Miller crossing comedies romantic comedies you know all sorts of different things and there's always like a scheme going on and it always ends up going terribly wrong. Oh, yeah, that's and true. someone gets killed and like it ruins people's lives. It just goes through that, whether, you know, it's a violent movie or not. And you see that in this, but it's a very, for someone's first film and the budget they worked with, it's a very polished movie. Oh yeah, you, know, you, you could tell it's a Coen Brothers movie by the way it's filmed. Um, a couple years, you know, not a couple years, a, few, a handful of years later, they made uh, The Man Who Wasn't There, which kind of was a little more similar to this. But obviously, they could be they had a little more artistic um, freedom with it because they had a higher budget, so they could do this and film it in black and white and get you know bigger actors in it. But uh, this movie was cool because you know M Emmett Walsh was their first big actor. They reeled in for this, and he even um, as a story goes, he uh, supposed like he made them pay him in cash because he wasn't really? sure if, 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 it, if the movie was going to do anything or, you know, cause these are two dudes that this, you know, that he didn't know, but I, he took I, a chance I, on it, you know? I and, love and M. Emmett Walsh is, we can go on about M. Emmett Walsh. Yeah. For quite well, a you, long time. Hey, what talks. you see in this movie is, is what this guy can do. The guy, the guy's good. In a, every, it's, I forgot it was with Roger. I think it was Roger Ebert that said, you know, him and Harry Dean Stanton, if those oh. guys are in a movie, it's got to be pretty good. You know, it's like either way. Well, you but, know, and I, I don't want to, you know, put him in this category, but that's in a little bit, maybe a, a, a notch below. That's the kind of, you know, Tom Sizemore, you know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. those kind of actors that kind of can just snake their self into a movie and actually end up being, no matter if they're on the screen for a little bit or a lot of it, end up. And, you know, he, this whole cast in this movie, though, I mean, are you a fan of Francis McDormand? Yeah, and she's she's and it's kind of fun that we're doing a Wes Anderson movie because she's been in a few Wes Anderson movies too. She's been yeah. in different ones, you know, three different Wes Anderson films. Um, this is the first movie she did, and they actually wanted a. I think initially they wanted Holly Hunter to do it, but she couldn't. But Holly Hunter was her roommate, Frances McDormand's roommate, and said, "You should try. You know, you should go for this." And then she met, you know, with them, and she ended what? She married Joel Cohen, right? And it was Joel yeah. Cohen she married. Yeah. And but this was her first role, you know. And then she obviously did a lot more Coen Brothers movies after this, but yeah, well, the overall plot of whatever she does is, too. The know? overall plot of the movie is 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 you know it's pretty cool for a Coen Brothers movie. You know, you got a bartender, 
yeah. who falls in love with the woman of the owner of the bar. And just pretty much, you know, the, the that owner hires M.M. at Walsh and just pretty much becomes an entanglement of, well, passion and, and death, as you said, and not good things. You know what I'm saying? It's just rewatching it recently with, well, recently being the last couple of days, it's, I think a movie really holds up pretty well. Yeah. It's kind of each, each, each character kind of has their own motive, you know, in the movie that pushes it along a bit. And, uh, always like Dan Duryea, you know, Oh yeah, he's always, he's, yeah, he's Nick. He first, he was Nick Tortelli to me in Cheers, but you know, he's been in some, you know, good movies and stuff. You know, he was, he was in uh, Mulholland drive. David oh, yeah. film, And, uh, he's been in a lot of things, but he was g- great in this. Um, but, yeah, you can tell it's a very it's a very Cohen esque, and and that's difficult to kind of pull off with your first movie. We're going to talk about you know Wes Anderson in a minute in kind of an, of an in an opposite vein, but this is a uh, for someone's it's very impressive. Now they haven't I wouldn't say they've evolved a lot since then, but they didn't really need to. They kind no. of they they their formula is what they're great at, and uh, I mean this movie's very for whom the bell tolls it or. Uh, not when the bell tolls, that's the different one. Uh, Postman always rings twice. Yeah. It's very much like that in a way. It is, which honestly, within the last, I watched that over Christmas for the first time, the one with Jack Nicholson. Is that what you. No, no. The, Are you talking about the original one? The original one, yeah. 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 That one's good too. With uh, Lana Turner, John yeah. Field. It, it was, it's very, it's very much like that in a way. But um, this is, this is grittier, obviously, because it went from when it was made. And, uh, well, you got Barry Sonnenfeld. This is like the first time he's getting involved in Hollywood. He's working with them as their um, cinematographer, mm-hmm. you know, and he goes on to direct, you know, you know, Get Shorty and but stuff. I, you know, I'm like, love me some Get Shorty. Oh, I know you do. That's why we had to throw some Get Shorty out in there. Um, really, to me, my introduction, which is funny, is I always used to watch um, Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead. Mm-hmm. And John Getz is the uh, guy trying to hit on Christina Applegate in that movie, and he's really ridiculous. So then to watch him in this movie is pretty much like a serious kind of cowboy type. I love even this cover. I mean, I love the it's the '80s and that purple because it's the '80s. I know that's why they're using it, but like, there's a lot of cool colors in some of those bar scenes, mm-hmm. especially if you're like in the dark and you're watching the movie in the dark. Um, Huge, huge Cohen Brothers fan, and um, I wish they had, I wish they would have had Dan Hadea in. Um, oh, can I call him Derry earlier? Uh, I, you I, did, I, and you did, and I didn't want to. Oh uh, no, I, I wish they had um, <coughs> Dan Hadea in, in some more of their movies. Oh yeah, I mean, he was because he he seems like a, a perfect Cohen Brothers, you know, like a villain or something. I mean, any movie he was, you know, he's good in. You know, if you look at all their movies, like he he he'd have had a good role in every one of those. No, you know, he I'm a big Brothers guy. And he's, you know, he's another yeah, actor. It's, it's, it's very part. good. It's uh, it's very uh, much what they stuck to. Uh, they've done it in different ways. They've shot movies in different ways. Obviously, they couldn't shoot the movie the way they probably, you know, if they shot the movie now, it might be a little bit different because they actually would have money to do so, to do what they want. But, oh, that's true. but it was very, and they said to get M.M. at Walsh that, you know, or to get a bigger actor like him. They had to make sure, like, this movie was very planned out beforehand. There weren't a lot of script changes and stuff. I'm a big but, fan of the, um, well, the music in the movie. Um, I really like, it's the same old song in the beginning and at the end of the movie, the way it's used. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm That's probably my favorite thing in movies is matching up the music to a scene like that. And especially their first movie, they did it pretty pretty well. And later, as we go on through more of their movies and stuff like that, it's, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a talent to, uh, it's a talent of a good director to do that. You can get those frames. Why'd you take these? What do you mean? Just doing my job. Really, really good movie. Um, when was the first time you remember seeing this movie? Probably about twenty years ago. I was oh, wow. just out of high school. It definitely wasn't. I, I saw the Big Lebowski before this. Okay. And that's kind of was like, you know, what else have they, you know, types of movies they've done? And then I was like, and I, you know, I, I've, I didn't see Raising Arizona. Obviously, when it came out, I was like six or seven years old. 
but you know, I saw the movie when I was younger, but I never knew that was a Coen Brothers. I didn't pay attention when I was a kid, like, you know, who made what. So, but it's kind of funny. It went from a movie like this to like Raising Arizona because, you know, it's like they went from a movie, like, a, like I said, a, a crime thriller to an absolute farcical like, comedy. You know, then, then they can make they can make like a you know westerns. They can make romantic comedies. They can they can do whatever, man. And they use the same type of formula, but they film them differently. And they put they get casted. You know, they use a lot of the same actors. Like you know, like Fargo is another one. Is oh, yeah. it, it's they can make horrifying things interesting and kind of almost humorous in a way. And they're always someone scheming something and something well, always to in a very humorous. And, like, you just said it right there in a very humorous way. That's very dark humor. They're very good at dark humor. You know, that's 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 you know, I, I that's why it's so awesome having these conversations with you because I remember seventh grade, this this kid moved into town and he started. He was in my clay was in my class, and then all of a sudden, he started talking about movies. And I had been watching movies before that, but just the movies that I've been watching, whatever, with my dad or whatever. But mm-hmm. he starts giving me like Taxi Driver. He gives me VHS with Blood Simple. I mean, he pretty much reminds me of you, but like in seventh grade. And I'm like blown away by some of these movies and the Coen brothers. I'll never forget like eighth grade. I mean, we went and seen Fargo in the movie theater, which that was just on before this. Um, As we're going to go really in depth later on the man that wasn't there, who wasn't there, that wasn't there. I always mess that part up, but that's a great um, Coen brothers movie remember buying that dvd but overall like you said first movie pretty pretty impressive yeah it's pretty very impressive the formula was there um they they knew what worked and they're very good at recognizing um strengths you know in their characters and uh they whether like i said whether they're shooting whatever type of movie it is they can use the same formula and it always comes out well but oh, yeah. they uh, but you know and they continue. I mean, I can't really name a bad, you know, Coen Brothers. You can always name Coen Brothers movies or something. But maybe I don't like that one as much. But like, you know, it's like we discussed before with like Martin Scorsese movies. Like, there's, there's even the worst one. You're like, that's still pretty damn good. You know, always a great time. Always awesome. I really appreciate talking this movie um, with Adam, and I appreciate you listening. And uh, stay tuned for at the show this week. Because we had a uh, just recent episode, The Crow, and this next episode, we got some Roadhouse. So please tune on in and uh, thank you so much for listening.